Oh, hi there. Hello. Hey now. Hola. And ba weep grana weep mini bong. However you want to say it, welcome to that Kev One show. We're about positive vibes and, you know, the train to where we need to go on this crazy apocalyptic uh, train ride that we find ourselves on cosmically. It's your destination chat wise for film talk from your favorite friendly hidden neighborhood actor, me, Kevin Michael Watson. <laughs> gentlemen welcome to that kev one show my first guest of the day is a very iconic you know him if your fingers on the pulse of comedy he's on many adult swim shows including most recently the eric andre show we're talking about the wild captain from tropical cop tales the one and only carl solomon welcome to the show oh i'm, I'm proud to be here thanks for inviting me kevin oh, of course it's an honor Anyone who's seen Tropical Cop Tales knows you're a scene stealer. I mean, that was like, I, I, how do I describe it to most people? It's like a, such a wild ride. It's almost like Twin Peaks meets Miami Vice. Is that, is that pretty accurate in your, your mind? <laughs> um, it's really trippy. Um, but, um, yeah. Yeah, it's Miami Vice. And I'm running roughshod over these two cops. And it's really funny. And but of all the episodes, um, seven is the best. Oh, yeah? Playing two characters. That's the one everyone uh, should check out? Okay. Uh, well, actually, okay. One, six, seven, and ten are the best. Okay. Um, that's where I had the most dialogue. But I'm playing two characters. Number seven. Um, I'm playing the hand gobbler. In other words, I'm biting um, while people are sleeping. I'm biting people's fingers off. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> and um, well, there was a movie that came out last November, which reminded me of that scene. Yeah. What movie is that? Uh, black actress. Well, I knew um, hmm. Timothy Shyamalan. Um, okay. Uh, she was in, uh, what was it called? Not Call uh, Me By Your Name or, or Dune with uh, Zendaya, maybe? No, no, no. Huh. Uh, no, no. It was um, uh, the actress uh, also bites people's fingers off. And, and I can't remember what the name of it was. Hmm. Uh, You'll have to IMDb pro it. Yeah, yeah. He's calling me doing this. Oh, <laughs> uh, this, this guy is just giving me directions to the set tomorrow. That's what that is. Oh. Yes, it's really great. Um, the first thing I've done in uh, over, a, uh, over a month. Okay, yeah. Um, and can you tell us about that project or no? Um, yes. Um, I don't want to get you any NDA right, trouble uh, at all. Tomorrow's no. Uh, tomorrow is, uh, tomorrow's project is, um, I'm playing a homeless person for it's Totally Studios. Mm -hmm. Um, I've done a couple of YouTube videos for them, and, uh, they just moved their operation to, uh, uh what is it? Uh, it's after San Clemente. Okay. Oh, Carlsbad. Yeah. Um, so from Burbank, uh, he moved his studio from Burbank oh, to cool. uh, Love Burbank. Carlsbad. So he must have done it uh, this year. But um, you could watch um, YouTube video is uh, a homeless guy <laughs> takes over airline. Uh, okay. Um, it, it takes over airline industry. Uh, That'll pull you up. I, I take over Pan Am. Um, I, I dress like a homeless person at the airport, and you know they, they think I'm homeless, but actually I'm the guy that's taking over their um, airplane. Okay. Because Pan Am went uh, you know out of business. Yeah. Um, so um, so I, I do a lot of projects for this guy, uh, but um, um, get, getting back to um, tropical cocktails. Um, Wait a minute. I, there's a, a, a hold on a second. Yeah. Damn it. What? 
the directors are really patient with me. Oh, are, you, are you getting hit up, hit up by them right now? No, no, no. Oh. We, don't, uh, we don't have to hang up. Oh. I have to look up uh, something on IMDb Pro. How can I not think of this? <laughs> Wait, I'll tell you in a second. What film? Uh, because they got uh, this movie, got their idea from episode 7 of Tropical Cocktail. Oh, okay. Speaking of trouble with cocktails, so with this... I can't this, find his name. Oh, that's all good. Um, with this homeless role, do you have your trademark giant beard? So is that, does that kind of probably help you get the yes, role? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Love that beard. It's very Captain Crunch-esque. <laughs> I think anyone would uh, recognize you anywhere with it, really. Oh, well, wait a minute. I think... Hmm. At least you're like reaping the rewards of it, you know. Oh, yeah. okay. I, I found out what it is. Hmm. It's bones and all. Do you remember that? Film? Oh, bones and all. Yeah, I mean, I remember the posters yes, and stuff for it. The, so yeah, it's a big movie. Yeah. Scene. It's a surprise. It's a shock. Okay. Um, she's in school, and uh, after school they decide to um, paint each other's, you know, fingernails. Her mm -hmm. and um, you know the, the rich people from the school, mm -hmm. and then she takes a look at the finger. And God just stomps on it, <laughs> and everybody freaks out. Ah, uh, <laughs> out. Oh my God! And um, and then she runs, and then our father says, "Damn it! Now we have to leave this city again. The police are going to come after us." <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> um, um, so, um, and then you see, um, oh. And then she, um, she has to leave, you know, the town and, and start anew. Uh, and there's only a few of those, um, they call them eaters? Um, they call them eaters. You know, like, oh, you got to see this film. It's, it's yeah, pretty horrible. Bones and all. Yeah, Bones and all. So Bones and I do the same thing. And uh, we might have used the same uh, special effects. I eat people's fingers. Isn't that while funny? While they're um, asleep. It's... In um, episode oh, wow. seven of Tropical Cocktails. And it's... Then I saw Bones and All, and I said, Oh, my God, they got the idea from that, that episode I worked on. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, but, of course, they're going to deny it. Uh, just <laughs> as... Uh, uh, like that movie, The Master... Yeah, yeah, with Joaquin Phoenix and Philip Seymour Hoffman. No, well, it wasn't Joaquin. Oh, wait, oh. that's right. It was Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix, the late great. Yeah, Philip Seymour uh, Hoffman, right? Yeah. Yeah, Paul. Uh, yeah, Seymour. Yeah, Paul Seymour Hoffman. Uh, I mean, Philip Seymour yeah. Hoffman. And uh, the thing is, all right. I asked the first AD on the set uh, that shoot. Um, excuse me, but is this film about L. Ron Hubbard? And he said no. But you know. Yeah. And everybody who's yeah. Movie, yeah. I saw that. About, uh, I think I saw that at the Directors Guild in LA when I was living there. Yeah. No, totally. <laughs> That's funny. What was it like working on the Master? Um, it was great. We had to do it all over again. Um, they fired somebody. Oh. Uh, can you hear the? Um, Hmm. The message thing ring on your end, or is it just on my end? Oh no, just it must be just on yours. Oh, okay, it's really distracting. Oh. Uh, 
but um, but they fired someone but, on the yeah, master. Yeah, wow. The is, um, so they redid like half the movie or a fourth of it or something like that. Kind of like a um, okay. kind of like the Back to the Future situation with um, when Michael J. Fox got hired on after they got rid of Eric Stoltz. It sounds like something like that kind of. No, no, no not like it was fired. Hmm. Uh, um, it was, um, or it's, there's a scene where it, 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 it's a mansion and everything. Yeah. Um, and, um, and Philip Seymour Hoffman is, um, you know, it's, you know, doing this whole monologue, uh-huh. you know, about, you know, like, you know, the, the big, you know, whatever, you know, whatever Scientology is, you know, how this is great. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. All right. So this guy disputes him. And um, so Joaquin Phoenix takes the tomato and throws it at his face. Do you remember that? Scene? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, the guy who got the tomato on his face um, got replaced, and we had to do this. We hmm. had to do the, We did that. Had to do the scene for four days. Oh wow. Yes. Any idea why he was fired? Uh, I don't yeah. know. Uh, he ever does a Q&A, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's a good question to ask. Uh, oh. But, um, but you can't, uh, the directors are not truthful. Um, they can't, um, they can't say what the film is about. Yeah, um, everyone, I wonder I mean, if they, they would now. Because, um, they'll, 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 Scientology will sue them. Oh, they still to this day, oh, wow. Yes. I almost wonder if there's a little more leeway or not, you know, with social media and, you know, even with, um, well, it's there's all those documentaries. Well, I worked on it, so yeah. I don't know if, um, I don't know if it was a secret that this person got fired oh, um, yeah. in that scene, but, uh, I mean, it depends on how many, you don't have more than, a uh, 100,000 listeners, do you? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, so is it <laughs> 10,000 or less? Yeah. Oh, um, Unless the numbers are shooting up, but... You know. Oh, the numbers should read my Facebook page. Um, I wrote down, um... Uh, but only a few people would get it. Um... Wait. Oh, yeah, I wrote down, uh, Victor Stalva is, uh, shooting a new, um, horror film. Children of the Cornwall. <laughs> you get it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> It's definitely on brand. <laughs> okay, but most people never heard of it. Really? So they wouldn't get it. Except horror, you know, horror. Films. Yeah, which is huger than ever, you know. They are. Yeah. Um, a lot of my friends, um, I, I always get, that's the genre I uh, get hired for. So, uh, yeah, I, I did Desert Fiends. And um, if you go to um, YouTube, type in mm-hmm. Desert Fiends trailer, you'll see me having dialogue with the one and only Eric Roberts. Oh my gosh, wow. When did you film yes. that? When was that filming? Uh, we did that in April, and uh, a week after we did it, uh, the trailer was out, and I, uh, the wow. director chose me to be in the trailer. Very cool. And yeah. um, people have seen the trailer and commented on it and said, um, it's like your, your role is like the hills have eyes hmm. and also um, uh, uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre um, you will recall in some horror films there's always a guy the guy that runs the gas station um, a carload of uh, naive uh, you know teenagers you know stop gas up ask for directions mm-hmm. And um, I give, and the person gives the directions to um, where um, the mutants, the monsters, or um, the zombies, or whoever is um, killing people, is going to come. So instead of like these four t- uh, teenagers, and one of them is the star of one of the greatest films ever made, Boyhood, oh. um, Lorelai Linklater. Uh, oh, wow. The daughter of also uh, Richard Lee. Yeah. Uh, Hollywood that royalty. Yeah. Died dazed and confused. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Yes, yes. Of course, <laughs> we couldn't book Matthew McConaughey. Not yet. <laughs> but uh, we got Eric Roberts. Uh, we got uh, Tom Arnold. Uh, oh wow. 
Yes. Oh, uh, my production team. We are able to get names, bigger names than me. Very cool. And um, Very we cool. had Michael Parry from Streets of Fire. Oh my gosh. Yes. Pulling back the old classics, yeah. The, the thing is, I have this theory. I found out there's another actor that is available for work. Uh-huh. And that is, um, I, if I had his number, I'd call him. I, I, you know, I just, we call him Cousin Eddie. In other <laughs> words, Cousin Eddie from those vacation yeah. movies. Oh, my God. Um, 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 wait. Oh, uh. Well, you know who played Cousin Eddie in, um, vacation movies um, oh Randy Quay oh yeah 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 from Christmas Vacation I, I and what was, other, what was the other one? Uh, oh wow yeah and he's uh, is he uh, uh, all the charges uh, in Canada and America were dropped and he's back in the States yeah I remember hearing that yeah so uh ooh he's yeah. viral yeah because um yeah. Because everybody's been wondering, whatever happened to Randy Quay? Yeah. Are you in communication with him, or...? No, hmm. no. But he's on, uh, he's on the short list. The, 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 uh, my director buddies. Maybe uh, I'll, maybe I'll uh, throw a Randy Quaid hashtag when we post this, and maybe he'll see it, and, uh... <laughs> hey, I heard that on the Ke that Kev One show. <laughs> he hits you guys up. Yeah, his whole yeah. family is everywhere now, like, um... Because Dennis Quaid, his brother, right? Course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Unless it's a cousin. Yeah. And then I didn't realize um, when I was watching that great Amazon series, The Boys, that um, Dennis Quaid's son is on it. He's the star of it. So I was like, whoa. Oh, um, well, his last name's Quaid, so I should have realized it. Ah, oh, what is his name? His name's escaping me. A lot of them changed their um, names. But his last name is Quaid. And he's also in the well, the latest, uh, the one before the last Scream movie he's in. I won't spoil oh, what happened. Who else is in the boys? I mm. think just just in one episode. Ooh, uh, one of my favorite actors. Ooh, what? Uh, Giancarlo Esposito. Oh my! Oh, he's in a couple. I've seen him. Yeah, he's uh, he's yeah, great. Yeah, Gus Fring. Yeah, yeah, he's so good. He has a huge uh, story arc in uh, I think last season. So he's in more than one that I saw. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Real medicine. I've never so, seen him do comedy, but I've seen him like be really funny and charming in interviews. He always wears like a um, like a fedora and dresses up. Yes, but Very have friendly. you seen all ten episodes of Tropical Cocktails? I saw most of them when they were new, and then I can't remember what I was doing. I think I had to travel for work. I know I saw. Well, it's only ten. Only, oh, uh, I might have seen I might have seen them all, but when you said you played two roles, that doesn't ring a bell. I know you did so much. Like I remember you had the, the Wild Captain going crazy, and I remember I really remember vividly. I almost feel like it was almost for no reason, uh, kind of like the the show. It's so outrageous at times when you're um, yelling at the two cops. You're like done up in makeup, yelling about uh, a cannibal or a face eater or something. Uh, uh, it might have been episode two or three. Uh, 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 yeah, now, uh, the pilot we saying uh, uh, we got to get the, the face ripper on. Was it that? Uh, it was something like that. Yeah, but you have a little guy next to you posing. And you're like, put your hands on your hips, and it's almost like. I almost feel like uh, yeah, you, they didn't even explain uh, why, but you're done up almost like uh, the Joker yeah, almost. Troy or Roy Beecham. Uh, so good. They made the smoothie for me. I mean, that was... Yes! Like, yeah, yeah. So drink fun. your smoothie or whatever you yell at yeah, them. And I say, um, and here is uh, the character uh, making a tropical... Tropical smoothie, yeah. And then the, you, had, you had like a tropical energy drink too. Oh my god, yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, that they had to drink their tropical energy drinks. Oh my it's god. It's really great. Um, I'll tell you, it was the best thing I ever worked on. It's so and iconic. I like anyone. To, um, yeah. Um, my director buddy from the UK, Jim Hosking. Jim Hosking. Okay. Shout out to Jim. Yeah, he, uh, he puts me in everything. I mean, you're you're you have such a great look. I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, by the way. You have such an iconic look with your yeah, look. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, and you got the skills. Do you I got... look better with the beard or when I'm clean shaved? Okay, so in my opinion, uh, 
probably with, but I'm a beard guy because, like, I used to change my facial hair with, like, the seasons. And then we had COVID, so I grew a COVID beard under the mask, you know, so it's like, what's the point of shaving? And then once the mask mandate came off, I, like, decided to put mustache wax in because I had so much facial hair. And I get so many compliments and smiles that it's like, well, I think this is my look now, you know, unless I got to shave it for a roll. So I'm kind of a beard guy, and you look great with your beard. You're like a beard hero, you know, oh, I'd say. thanks. I'm probably going to have to uh, keep it at least till August. I, it's weird, weird how fast my beard grows fast. Oh, yeah? Are you Italian uh, or Scottish I, like I, me? I shaved it for Joker 2. Oh, my God. With a, yes. what is, It has a French title, right? Because it's a Joker uh, or yes, something? Yes, it does. Like Joy something. Um, and it has um, Lady Gaga in it. Yeah, it's Harley Quinn, right? Yeah. Yeah, she's Harley Quinn instead of Margot Robbie. I remember as a kid when Harley Quinn was invented, when I was like in uh, the Batman the Animated Series, they invented Harley Quinn, and she was on that. She wasn't an original Batman character, and then they put her in the comics afterwards because she was so popular, so that's a really well, pretty well, special it character. Was, it was the comics. Mm-hmm. Instead of like the TV, I love that TV show with Adam West. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I, did uh, you ever meet him? I met him once before he passed. I, oh, where? I met him. He did an episode of the George Lopez show, and the person I was dating at the time um, knew the uh, what's the guy who gives the lines to people? Oh, who's on book? Um. Oh, he was the teleprompter. Uh, tell. I think he had like a book in his hand. Like they give him lines if someone needed a line. And, and he has, he was actually on Cobra, uh, not Cobra, he was in Cobra Kai, but uh, the Karate Kid and head of the class, but now he's a, uh, or last, at the time he was one of those guys who uh, feeds people lines if they need them. Uh, on script, you know, someone who's on script there. But a I saw went to a, supervisor? Yeah, a script supervisor. And so I went to but the... I, I have a, um, I have director buddies that will feed me lines. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, but I, I, I can memorize. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love Memorize, I love improv but, but the George Lopez show, we went, I went to a taping of it, and then I went behind the scenes because we knew people. And, jo and um, Adam West played a judge on that particular episode. And so I met him, and I was like, hey, you know, it's, it's an honor to meet you. I love you from Batman and Family Guy, because he was a voice on Family Guy. And he said with his and, iconic and, voice. And he was yeah. also on The Simpsons also. Oh, yeah. But yes. I, I love when I said, I said, uh, I said to him, you were going to Family Guy. I always remember he said his very iconic voice said, Family Guy's fun. You know, with his voice. I was like, oh, yeah. I always remember, I always remember yeah. that, like, core memory. Oh, yeah. yes. So does he talk like the, like the Batman He character? talked kind of, yeah, with that cadence. Yeah, that whole, that kind of that deep. And that was him behind the scenes, you know, at the little uh, little rap party for it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, he was really yeah, nice. Yeah, was at the rap party for uh, uh, George Lopez Biden, show. Uh, Oh, yeah. Hot in Baltimore. Ooh, yeah. Or hot in Cleveland. Hot in Cleveland. Oh, yeah, yeah. With, um... Betty White. The lady show. Oh, wow. Huh. So what are you doing in Joker 2? Or Joker... Uh, I can't remember the French name I'm, of it. I'm playing a mental case, except... Uh, oh, there's there a whole, you go. <laughs> they used a whole bunch of real mental cases. It was horrible. Wait, what do you mean? Like, so, like, were you in, like, a real asylum? And that's why they had the real yes, people there? Yes, oh, my God. Asylum. Now, wow. When I read Batman comics yeah. in the 60s uh -huh. and 70s, there was no Arkham Asylum. Oh, okay. See, my whole life there was. So that came they, like the uh, 80s or 90s? They, I, think, I think the comic book world added it huh. in, in the 80s. I mean, I stopped reading. I, I read DC and Marvel yeah. comic books. And then, uh, but I loved, of all the comic books, uh, Zap. Do you remember Zap Comics? Zap, uh, yeah, I remember Robert Zap Brown. with the exclamation point on the cover, right? Yeah. Zap, yeah. Yeah, that was really great because um, it didn't adhere to the comic code of America. Yeah, that, that old, in the corner they used to have a, for listeners that don't know, the Comics Code Authority, and, I, and then they, yeah, and after Zap a while they made a, a yeah, ship. it was always a huge deal when someone didn't have that on the in the corner. And now, nowadays, I wonder if they even have that anymore. Because I know there's such adult comics out there. I'm, I mess, I'm guessing that's still a thing, right? The comic. Remember, because there was some book or something where they made it. The what was it called? The corruption of children. It was like a war against comics at one point. Oh yes, yes. Now we, um, we're having that again from Governor DeSantis in Florida. Oh. A lot of the comics are banned. Really. 
Oh yeah. my gosh, that's horrible. I'm an, yeah, I'm, I'm an OG comic guy, so yeah. I remember I always tell people, <laughs> I like to say, like, I'm such a comic fan, I remember when people just thought Iron Man was a marathon, you know, and then the, the, everyone's like, Iron Man's my favorite superhero, and I'm like, ah, ten years ago you didn't know what that was. Do you remember the fabulous <laughs> furry freak brothers? Yeah, yeah, the bearded guys. Yeah, the kind yeah. of 70s, just kind yeah. of, uh, they always smoke doobies, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. The, the three stooges of the utopian sex dudes. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of like, uh, kind of like with with that kind of that R. Crumb kind of art, right? Kind of. I don't think it was the same yeah. artist, was it? or maybe it was the same, but it was that kind of vibe. I remember. You know, I saw that they they made they made or they're making an animated series of that. Did you know that? Of what? The Fabulous Freak Brothers. Oh, it's already out. Oh, okay, yeah, like with um, yeah, two, John two Goodman. Of it. Oh, okay, it's good. I don't know who. I don't know which uh, streaming service has. It. I forget. Yeah. I, I wouldn't bet a million dollars, but I won't. There's so many streaming services. There's How can so many. Afford all those streaming services? Oh, I know. It's like more than cable, you know? Now. <laughs> that was the... it is. Oh, man. It's crazy. I'm like, you know, and then there's this. You try to share with friends and stuff. And ironically, I don't want to get in too much trouble with this, but one of the ones that I pay for, because, like, you know, I'm like, you're, you know. I got, oh, yeah. Now, call your friend. When you want to watch, let's say, Netflix. That's yeah. the only one I know that um, enforces it. Yeah. I'll call your friend. Okay, I'm watching Netflix right now. You know, though, I mean, talking about the one that you're uh, sharing Netflix with. Yeah. You just warn them in advance. Uh -huh. I'm sharing so many, and I, I have my own profile, and you know how it works. I'm not, like, stealing, like, pirating, but, you know, I'm on people's profile and stuff. My own profile. But that it's ironic that the one, I don't want to say them and get in trouble, but ironically, one of the two that I pay for myself has commercials. I'm like, I'm paying for this and there's commercials, you know? <laughs> Ridiculous, but yeah. So, um, do you what? Do yeah, no, oh, yeah. Check my IMDb, Kevin Michael Watson. Yeah. Okay. The most recent thing I filmed um, was um, Little Wing with Brian Cox that I filmed here in Portland. And that was really cool. Um, oh, you know what else filmed in Portland? That, hmm. that is really good. Um, well, I know, Pig. but... Did you work on Pig with uh, Nicholas No, Pig? I saw it. It was so good. I loved Pig, yeah. yeah. There's, a under, there's that underground fight club for the cooks. That was crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 One of the cooks uh, steals his pig. Yeah, his the truffle, truffle pig. pig. Yeah. yeah. Another Portland production. What did I see recently? I saw some anime... Oh, Pinocchio was shot in. Um, yeah, uh, that was that film maybe at Lake Leica Studios downtown Portland, probably. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was born and raised in Portland, Oregon, here, and where we're located now at the studio. And um, but I've lived in LA for about five years. I did like Operation Repo down there, and um, oh, I, yeah. I don't want to date myself, but I did an Alias episode, you know, the Jennifer Garner show. So it was during that time. Oh yes. Yeah. Um. But then I came back here, and when I was doing this episode of Cold Case Files, and one of the makeup artists who was, like, shaving my beard at the time down to this creepy mustache where I was playing this real-life killer, Bobby Dean Taylor, who uh, is still in prison. I keep getting afraid I'm going to get a letter from him saying, you did well, or I'm going to come for you. you know? But, uh, oh. <laughs> but the, the makeup artist was like, the makeup artist was like, you should, you should, you should just stay in Portland. There's just so much stuff filming. At the time, there was Portlandia. And a show called Grimm, and I'm like, well, yeah, but there's, like, what, two things oh, at a time? Oh, the Grimm Tales, yeah, I remember looking at but, but that was only temporary. Yeah, that's not filming here anymore, but, you know, and I was like, well... There was a way, there was a, like, a... Yeah? Uh, there was a way back then, um, uh, you would, um, you would Google or, uh, you would Google every state has a film commission. Mm -hmm. And you would, and you would go to their websites and find out what film is, um, shooting. Mm-hmm. And it turned out, um, unfortunately, most of it is non-union, that um, one of the states, and I lived there for three years because there was multiple days work, but there wasn't uh, much dialogue, and that was the state of New Mexico. Oh. That worked a lot of days on um, The Lone Ranger, and another one, um, A Million Ways to Die in the West. Ooh, okay, and, two and westerns. I learned funny, <laughs> and I learned a funny word huh. from Seth MacFarlane on what? that set. Oh, what? Uh because uh, here's the scene I did with Seth, Seth MacFarlane. Um, I played the, uh, the recurring um, grocery store guy that is always sweeping the boardwalk, because all western towns have, you know, boardwalks. Yeah. 
um, and dirt roads. Yeah. Oh, and we shot it at uh, Bonanza Creek Ranch, uh, the same place where um, um, Alec Baldwin um, killed the DP. Oh, wow. Really? Uh, so, the same? Uh... Yeah, that's where uh, most Westerns are shot. In huh. It's very, uh, it's a very, um, it's a very realistic uh, Western town. Huh. So, um, sweeping the sidewalk and, um, and uh, Seth MacFarlane's uh, girlfriend leaves him for, uh, um, um, Doogie Howser. Oh, yeah, 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 the villain in the film, yeah. Yeah, he's the villain in the film. Mm -hmm. um, one of them, there's two. I think Liam Neeson was one of them. Oh yeah, he was too. the he was this badass like yeah, yeah. yeah. well kind of like yeah. I played. That's kind of he's being uh, typecast as that now. Had a, Seth MacFarlane had a draw with some of these, but anyway, he loses his girlfriend, uh, played by Amanda Siegfried, to um, mm. uh, Doogie Howser, and um, and so um, here's the scene: uh, Seth MacFarlane. Um, so Seth MacFarlane is talking to um, Giovanni uh, Ribisi mm -hmm. uh, for some advice. Great actor, yeah. And Giovanni uh, tells um, Seth, uh, says, oh, I know this girl at church that gives good blumpkins. <laughs> and um, that scene was cut out. It's not even oh. in the Uber reel. Oh, wow. And then I Googled the word blumpkin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Heard that's in um, the Urban Dictionary. Oh, yeah. So uh, have your um, listeners... Google the word Blumpkin It rhymes with pumpkin Yeah And uh, that's <laughs> And then you'll find out Why that scene was cut out But it's only a word hmm. But great I learned a word From Seth MacFarlane I wonder if that's like A rusty trombone Or what I'm trying to verify I know I've heard of Blumpkin But I feel like I heard about it On the Howard Stern show Or something like that I feel like I heard about it somewhere. Yeah I can see him You know saying Something like that. that Yeah Alright <laughs> But, um, yeah, I've had um, a lot of, you know, great adventures on the set. Um, a lot of um, the good sets have the friendliness and the camaraderie. Yeah. Like uh, Desert Fiends and Minks. And um, what else? Uh, well, well, you know, those two. Um, one of the ones. As far as the past two years. Um, and of course, Eric Andre. Oh yeah, I love the Eric Andre right show. Now. Yeah, um, you're in episode I want to say two or first? episode three. Three of episode the season. Three. Oh, okay. Um, it's out right now on um, Adult Swim. Um, I don't know if Adult Swim has Ad Adult Swim on demand. Above yeah, I feel like it's right on now. it's on if Hulu it's or not. Max. I know it's on one of those because I've seen it. It's, I should have grown that. Wait, the problem is. The other streaming services wait um, yeah. as long as a year to air it, like they did with Tropical Cocktails. And, uh, oh, and I'm also with Jackass, Jackass 4.5. I'm one of the naked people that runs out of the sauna after Johnny Knoxville pulls the fire alarm. Really? Yes. Um, oh. That's on Netflix. You can watch me. Now, what was that uh, shoot like? Was so that like... the thing is, I get work that has a demographic of <laughs> 6 to 25 years old. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Adult Swim, Adult Swim, Jackass, uh, you know, the you know, demographic, but I don't care. I love it. So, yeah, with that, you know what's funny about, like, um, great character actors like you, like, so do you have, like this crazy swath, this crazy, like, difference of, like, when people notice you, like, you go somewhere, you think you might get noticed, like, at the Grove in L.A., and no one notices you, but then you go somewhere, uh, and then people notice there. you like a rock star. Um, all right, recently, um... Because people who recognize you must um, love you, but then, like, it's, like, a lot of character, a lot of blinking, you miss it, but a lot of, like, you steal a lot of scenes, and you're in a lot of stuff. Well, the guy uh, a lot at of the, passionate uh, the stuff. airline counter recognized me. I know you. You're in the Boogie video. Um, it's a rapper mm. um, mm -hmm. um, named Boogie. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I could say the name. What do you mean, of, like a... uh, the title of the, oh. uh, the rap song? You want to partially bleep it, maybe, or uh, your song? <laughs> uh, I mean, if it's a song, I mean, I feel like. But uh, yeah, if it's a sensitive language, I feel. Uh... 
I mean, is it like a racial word or something? Yes. Oh, yeah, you don't know, like that. Okay. Yes. Yes. It, it, the title is racial. Um, yeah, I mean, feel free to be careful, but Sam, if you want, like... at the end instead oh. of an E-R. Oh, I gotcha. And it... And so, uh, and then the uh-huh. second word is needs. <laughs> okay. And this guy is... So uh, that word, uh, that guy, word oh, needs. the lady that directed me mm-hmm. in that music, the Boogie music video, was really famous. Mm. Uh, uh, her mom uh, passed away uh, just mm. uh, recently. Um, Riley Keough. Oh, yeah. Keough. I don't know how to pronounce it. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Priscilla Presley's, uh, you know, daughter. Yeah. I think she had two daughters, and she did not keep the uh, Presley name. She kept, um, because after Presley passed away, uh, 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 Priscilla married somebody else whose last name is Keo, K-E-O-U-G-H. Hmm. And so that's, uh, so that's her uh, daddy. That's why she doesn't call herself Presley. But she was a nice director to work with. Hmm. And all I did was stare at the press at the uh, pedestal while uh, Boogie was, you know, you know, rapping with yeah. a bullet hole, you know, um, in his back, and, what's, you know, in his uh, belly. And so what's the name of that song? It's the, that word needs, though, right? Followed yeah, by that oh, okay. Needs. So if we YouTubed that, we'd see you, right? You're saying? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, it's, it's a great video. Well, I think and everyone I think everyone can decipher. Yeah. And then uh, every time I go to eat, and um, I, you might have ate at this restaurant. It has the best chicken fried steak. It's called Vivian's on the corner of uh, uh, Ventura and Vineland. I mean, you know no, yeah, no, I know where, I know where that is. It. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, the best chicken fried steak. Well, I'll walk in. Uh, the cook will say... All aboard for um, anchors away. He, may, he means anchors away. <laughs> and you can watch this. Um, there's a um, there's a website that shows all the TV commercials, and it's called iSpot.tv. And uh, my Little Caesars commercial is uh, on there, where I say uh, they paid me for um, the English version and the Spanish version. Hmm. And uh, English version, I'm saying, anchors away. And uh, the Spanish version, I'm saying, todos a bargos. Which means the same. Uh, oh, wow. And uh, so I spot TV, and then uh, they, they, you press the little search thing and type in Little Caesars Boater Home. B O A T E R H O M A. So Little Caesars Pizza Boater Home, and it's on iSpot TV. It might be on YouTube, but it's uh, but iSpot TV is better. Okay. Has all the, the commercials. Okay. And it has probably the less the Nestle's commercial from the Utopian Sixties. Do you remember this commercial? N E S T L E S. What comes out of your ass? <laughs> no, I don't remember. Chocolate. That was an actual commercial that made it to air? Yes, yes. <laughs> wow, no, I wouldn't recall. Have you seen the new, have you heard of Indeed? Yeah, the no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the young work, yeah. Well, here's the new, um, the, the Indeed commercial goes like this. Um, so this really hot chick. Mm-hmm. She's in her late twenties, and she's interviewing job applicants. And the chick um, goes, "I have three openings." Indeed, you do. Did you get it? Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she had three openings like yeah, now, top, and back, and then yeah. Oh, but, but um, you can use it. You're not, not going to edit it because I'm a comic. No, yeah. And um, I think it's funny. Yeah. Uh, now, I, I, I doubt indeed would use that. Like, but, you um, never know. I mean, maybe on Adult Swim, between bumpers, you know? 
Yes, you might, uh, I can see, uh, do, do after a Tim and Eric show or something, or Eric Andre. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, getting interviewed for a job. They're back, too. Um, and they would say, you know, some, or say, I know. But I like that because of the Indeed commercial with the tagline, Indeed you do. <laughs> uh, you know, I, that sounds better than I know. Um. Uh, but, um, See, yeah. You come up with a lot of commercial jingles in your head a lot in your spare time? Yes, or, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm that way too. You, just, you kind of never stop creating, and you I know? Have a, I have a great uh, commercial agent, and I have a shitty film and TV agent, and I hope he, <laughs> you know, yeah. sees this, sees this, and drops me. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> she sent me out um, even before the pandemic. She never sent me out. Hmm. Um, she only sent me out. The only job she ever got me was another movie with Eric Roberts. Oh, what was that? I've been on, uh, but, uh, but this last one, Desert Thieves, is the only film I actually had dialogue with um, Eric Roberts. So mm. you want to, um, after we finish, um, mm. you want to go on YouTube, Desert Thieves trailer. Yeah, I know for sure. And you'll see me, you'll see me giving them um, uh, the car load of people going to a concert and giving them bad directions <laughs> uh, you're like the ominous um, guy that's in trapping them right I'm hugging and laughing uh, with um, you know Eric Roberts and I say uh, something like it's true and then they show the other part of the trailer uh, but um, everybody there was really cool and uh, we shot it out in one of the um, in one of the ghost towns, uh, which is situated between Las Vegas and uh, Searchlight. Hmm. Very cool. And um, I was looking at my schedule between now and um, January. Uh, I promise, or, or, or March. Um, next year, I've promised, you know, like seven jobs, so that's really good. Very cool. Yeah, especially with the writer's yes, strike. Yes. So, I and could use more, but um, are they all going to move seven forward? Seven jobs, not counting um, the one I'm doing tomorrow. Very cool. Well, so you're keeping really busy. Done anything in a month. Uh, because of the writer's strike or just uh, a um, lull? The writer's strike, and they, they anticipate um, a SAG strike. Oh my uh, gosh. July 1st. I hope not. Um, yeah. no, for demands are not met by July 1st. Uh, wow. Isn't that crazy? It's kind of scary. Uh, I wish, um, I, I, I encourage people to do, uh, when they hire me to do, uh, independent, uh, independent SAG wages between, um, SAG and me, uh, so I could still work, um, yeah. and, um, even if it's, um, the ultra low, mm -hmm. or the mini, uh, the ultra low um, agreements and the mini agreements. Uh, so, you know, because I love my union. No, yeah, you got to. The insurance, everything, yeah. Yeah, they just, have to. Yeah, um, yeah. Sometimes Protect they have to, get to pay us. Do you know they have to pay us $100 or more a day mm -hmm. um, to, to go on those, to get those COVID tests. But they stopped. Uh, supposedly hmm. the test is, uh, I mean, the, uh, um, depending on who you talk to, uh, the law COVID people, uh, it's not over for them. Yeah, but for I wonder, everybody else, it's over. And, uh, I wonder when we're going to have to stop testing, you know? I wonder, or if ever. Uh, well, I got tested. I had symptoms um, a month oh. ago when I got tested, and um, it's possible to have the same symptoms and not have COVID. Huh. But I had, oh, um, wow. and I only had COVID, I think I had COVID twice, but wow. at least de definitely one week in November. Yeah, I haven't had it. Knock on wood, I haven't had COVID yet, so. Yeah, are, are you vaccinated? I'm vaccinated, yeah. I remember when, we, when that was first going on, and I uh, I wasn't like, I mean, I was definitely gonna get, I was definitely going to get vaxxed, but I didn't get vaxxed yet. And then I booked, um, what was that Jay Leno show? I think he's still doing it. You Bet Your Life with Jay Leno. And Is that they, a reality show? It's, I mean, they call it reality, but it's like a game show, really. So they don't pay sack wages on that? No, they don't. I mean, they pay, they, they, I was in Portland then when I booked it with, via tapes and 
so many Skype interviews, and then they so they flew flew me out, put me up at a hotel and everything. So that was cool. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, but I had to show a Vax card proof picture, and then I had to, they sent me a test overnight. And I sent the test, and then they test you when you get there. So yeah. Yeah, they have to pay you for uh, taking the test. So sometimes mm -hmm. I have to uh, uh, twice. Um, I had to uh, I had to file a claim with SAG. Because they didn't pay me for the uh, the COVID test, wow. I finally got one. I got one on Holiday Road. Huh. Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Burr. Um, name somebody famous from Boston uh, besides Matt Damon. Oh, fuck, Matt Damon. Um, ooh, is it Michael Rappaport, right? No. Uh, Dennis Leary, maybe. No. No. Right wing piece of shit. <laughs> uh, uh, and the guy also from Boston that I Mark before. Wahlberg? Yeah, exactly. It's oh. Mark Wahlberg. Yes. Hmm. I worked on his movie Holiday Road. Uh, it's a road trip. They made land in Las Vegas and I worked one day on it. Yeah, they forgot to give me the coat. I mean they gave oh. me the they told me I would have to go to CVS instead of using Oh my the god. CVS, the pharmacy. Yeah, it's an inconvenience. I want to make CVS. sure you didn't say CBS, the no, <laughs> studio no. housing was, was uh, right? Instead, um, uh, because I'm, you know, I'm coming from um, LA. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, usually, uh, you know, I'll drive to Las Vegas and San Francisco for SAG work. Mm hmm. Uh, but, um, but, uh, yeah, so, um, I wonder if Cartoon Network has an on-demand feature. Um, I see, you know what, I feel like, um, what are you, are you looking for, uh, Tropical Cocktails, or what, because I know no, I... No, no, oh. the Oh, oh, oh you know what sounds crazy? I don't know if the new one's there. It's kind of like you're saying. I feel like they drop it a year later, but I know I saw Eric Andre listed on Hulu, but yes, I don't think they have the new season. Only, yeah. yeah. That's five. Well, that's I five. watch it. I'm such five, not six. Yeah. No, I'm such a real fan of Eric Andre uh, that I record it. I DVR it. So I have, like, the latest seasons they always record on Sundays at midnight or whenever. So... Yeah, I don't think it's on demand for a year, I feel like, or I don't know if the exact timetable. It could be on HBO Max, because HBO Max has a lot of Adult Swim. They have an Adult Swim section, for sure. So I think they own it. I think they own Adult, uh, adult Swim. Warner Brothers, right? Don't they own it? And we'll be right back after this brief message. This portion of that Kev One show is supported by Bohemian Dream Gifts, made with organic and natural oils that nourish and hydrate your skin. Man, I don't know if it's the weather outside or the gym that was killing my skin, because my right elbow on the, uh, it itched like the Dickens, like I was becoming like the lizard from Marvel Comics. Um, I think it's that machine where you put your elbow in and do the lifts, you know, for the bicep. But uh, I was itching my skin like crazy during, uh, well, I won't say who because I don't want them associated with rough skin with one of our guests <laughs> here in the near future here. <laughs> but my left, my right elbow was getting ashy and coming up, getting red and irritated. Anyway, I used some of the promotional cookie dough body oil from Bohemian Dream Gifts that they gave us. And my skin, I'm not kidding, came back. I can vouch for that one. The cookie dough oil baby body oil, the cookie dough body oil brought my skin back to life like an Evanescent song. I'm not kidding. My skin is smooth and happy again. 100%. You can buy cookie dough oil on Etsy at the Bohemian Dream Gifts shop. Check out their other stuff as well, but that's one that I that I swear by now. <laughs> and as soon as my promotional one runs out, I'm going to order some myself. So go to Etsy and visit the Bohemian Dream Gifts shop today. And now, back to the show. So you're saying, so, um, you were saying about Eric Andre? Yeah, was, we were talking about Eric Andre, and um, there's no, uh, they don't hmm. have um, a on-demand thing. I don't know how somebody with, uh, hmm. you have to have the Adult Swim app mm. for your cell phone. It's That's on why. the Adult Swim app. 
That's wild. Isn't that crazy nowadays? Like, I DVR it. I know it sounds kind of old school, you know, off cable, you know, just recording it. Um, and then you can watch it, I guess, a year later on Hulu or Max maybe now. HBO Max might have it now, but yeah, wild. But they uh, a year from now. Huh. Maybe that's to drive up uh, DVD sales, you know, or Blu-ray. Physical media, maybe. I, I don't think so. You don't think so? It's just like a weird anomaly. I don't know why they don't have it there. I know they have more Mendy, like, you know, like <laughs> yeah. I don't know why um, Eric Andre is not on demand. Uh, and I didn't, I, I didn't tell too many people about this, mm. uh, about this episode. Um, so yeah, just t- uh, tell your listeners to oh, get yeah. the Idol Swim app. I definitely will. And then um, I'm bring it to um, the provider store and have them set it up, um, which I have to. I didn't have time to do it today because I'm doing this podcast yeah. with you. I'm gonna yeah. have to do it Saturday. I'm gonna have to go to the uh, AT and T store <sighs> to um, to make sure that the Idol Swim. I mean the Idol Swim app is working on my cell phone because it isn't um, hmm. um, because you want to be able uh, to see yeah, uh... yeah because I am I'm paying um, I'm paying $330 a month Any... for um, the access, AT&T yeah. bundle which covers TV internet yeah. and phone well, if I find out in uh, in the comments and stuff when this when this posts, I'll uh, I'll get back to you. I'm like, hey, you can watch it this way, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, um, but right now, um, it's um, they're not sh- they're only showing. I think after they get done with the ten episodes, uh, let's see, they're showing two episodes a week at yeah. nine o'clock on Sundays. Yeah. And I wasn't sure. I didn't tell too many people about it. Um, but one of the things, a lot of times they cut my scenes out. But mm. um, at least they let, let me say have one one line of dialogue, which is, uh, priest to meet you. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, so I'm also on another podcast. Uh, oh, yeah. Do you know um, with... Do you know the um, Neil Jones from Without Your Head? Mm-hmm. Um, he put me on a, on his podcast. Uh, he has a a large following of horror fans. Okay, I probably it's probably one of those people that I know without knowing that I know them. You know, <laughs> he's from Boston. Okay. Hmm, we gotta check that out. And is that um is that already uh, posted? Is that already available to watch, to listen to, or podcast to listen to, or uh, is that coming soon? Um, you want to, um, I guess, go to the podcast section of um, whatever your app is mm-hmm. and type in Without Your Head and it okay. should show up. The Without Your Head podcast? Okay. With, without Your Head. Um, Interesting. Which is, um, I think of that scene hmm. in Hereditary. Did you ever see a movie called Hereditary? No, I want to. It's on my list because everyone keeps telling me it's like the best horror film or one of the best in recent um, years, right? After the scene, after halfway through, it's boring. Oh, really? Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's climaxes. Um, halfway through the movie. Huh. So you're not. Uh, right. you're, so you're, are you officially not recommending that you're saying? <laughs> no. Um, okay. Because. Hmm. One of the characters loses her head because she sticks it out the window while she's driving, and uh, because she stuck her head too far out. I think she had a bar or hmm. get some air, but she sticks her head out the window and gets decapitated. Oh. So that's an example of without huh. your head. <laughs> um, that's a good segue oh, for. That's a good segue. Day. That's a great I segue to. Uh... For you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and before we go, I wanted to talk about one of um, the films that I love. You're in so many of these unique, vibe-wise uh, movies and shows, like Eric Andre and stuff. But that uh, that's kind of like. I find with a lot of my ex-girlfriends, like, when I show them Eric Andre, the Eric Andre show, they either love it or they hate it. And I, I love that a lot of your projects are that way, you know? But, um... It is. It's like licorice. Yeah. Uh, you either love 
or hate it. I love, I love, it yeah, it's funny. I love black licorice, for Lakers example. A very famous guitar player said that too. Yeah. <laughs> but one of the projects like that is um, An Evening with Beverly Luff Lynn. I love that film with Aubrey Plaza oh and Craig Robinson. Oh my God, I forgot to mention that. That's yeah. a Oscar masterpiece. And you're, yeah, exactly. I love that movie so much. Coughing, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I have a dialogue with, uh, Cameron, what's his name? Oh, as Jermaine Clement. Clement, yeah, yeah from Fly of the Concords yes, and yes. yeah, so much. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, Jermaine Clement. Uh, I, you know, we're, we're looking for where the hell it is. Blah blah blah. I start coughing, <laughs> and of course I'm the uh, uh, DJ uh, Grillis. Yeah. Uh, DJ, I forget my, oh my god. Uh, I'm the DJ at the end. And he played this song that only became a hit in the UK, but nobody in America ever heard of it. Uh, And Um, you... And I played that song. Oh, that must have been such a great set. I mean, because... Every time I remember it, and then I start to, I've, I've seen it once all the way through, that I keep re, almost rewatching the show and trying to show people it. But I mean, besides like Aubrey Plaza, who, who doesn't have a crush on her, and she's blowing up uh, now. Craig Robinson, Jermaine Clement. Yeah, she's like, I love my aunt, my godmother, who uh, kept, I remember when I was a kid, I keep telling her that she got me into acting, but I was into acting already, but she would take me to the movies, and then she we'd, she was the first person that we snuck into another movie afterwards. <laughs> so, like, oh, so yeah, when they had, um, Double features, kind of. Nowadays, and this is, I don't want to see this happen, but the movie theater is going out of business. Yeah. Down, left and right. Yeah, I never pirate movies. I'd rather see a movie. It's I rather yeah. I'm going to kind of TV screen. Yo, yeah, like piggybacking from your Harley Quinn too. I'm gonna see um, Batman tonight. I'm going to, after this next interview. Then I have to fast track. Um, I'm gonna go see the Flash, which. Uh, I don't know if people are listening oh, to this later. Out it's out today, yeah. The Flash with Michael Keaton returning as Batman and oh, Ben Affleck's in it. We're gonna go see uh, uh, um, Sunday. We're going to premiere, yeah. Double feature. Ooh, yeah. Uh, uh, what was I gonna see? Oh, uh, Asteroid City. Ooh, yeah. Oh, they, wow, they yeah. Advertising that looks so uh, good. I yeah, would love to see like you. I would love to be in something like that. You know, very Portland. And I, I could see you in something like that for sure with your look. Yeah, Wes Anderson. Well, film. that's the point. Now that you mentioned, I actually got directed by uh, what's that lady in uh, Portlandia? Oh, uh, Carrie Brownstein, maybe. Carrie Brownstein. She directed me and Minx. Oh wow! She's great, and she also directed me. And um, she uh, cut my scene out. It uh, was the Nowhere In. Wow. Uh, starring um, oh, a Portlandian lady named um, St. Vincent. Okay. But her real name is Annie. Do you know her? I know, of, I know of her. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't know her personally, though, but yeah. Well, she, uh, she had me play a nude person. <laughs> At her uh, board meeting in Nowhere End, and then I paid $75 to see the film that included a meal, <laughs> and uh, it was the only way to see it, because there was no, uh, um, no distribution? Was, uh, not, that, not that many places to see a film. Wow. Um, and it was during the uh, pandemic, and um, so I did the, the drive-in, it was a drive-in uh, Format over in Malibu. Hmm. My scene was cut, and I was pissed off because I paid seventy-five dollars. So here I am working on mix, and there is Carrie. I said, Carrie, why, why was my naked scene cut hmm. in um, um, the nowhere end? As she said, Saint Elsewhere's mom saw the film. It tells her, it told. Uh, St. Vincent's Bob told um, St. Vincent to cut the, the naked, the three huh. naked people out of oh, the film. God. So I, got, I, got, I wound up on the cutting room floor. But oh. I'm glad uh, Carrie Brownstein was honest with me and nice. That's good, yeah. And uh, she worked on uh, one of the nicest TV shows I ever worked on, Minx. 
Huh. And I hope we have the third season. Yeah. Um, you'll see me. I'm one of the um, the bottom dollar gang. Okay. Um, the bottom people dollar that um, do the editorial copy and the um, and the layouts because it's um, a magazine that took place in the seventies and it was for a uh, woman. It was like Cosmopolitan. Huh. It was a cross between Cosmo and uh, Playgirl magazine. Oh wow. With beefcake. Oh men. yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't that on um is that on Hulu or I saw um, a trailer I, for that. It's on the Stars app. Stars um, app, okay. Yes, um, what I might be thinking what's of what's happening with the new Max. That's really blown um, up. And I'm, luckily they they got my show on. But do you know oh. I have to check to see if tropical cocktails are on. Oh, I saw that. I was a lot um. Of shows that's on. on. Max are getting yeah. cut. It's on there. I saw it today. Because they're not paying residuals. Yes, it's Ooh, still on there. Make sure you get your money. I was gonna say because it's on there. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, I got really good residuals from that show. Oh, but that was a good. year ago. You worked your ass off of that show too, so you better be getting that money. You know. I worked in every single episode. Yeah. It's the best thing I ever worked on, and it trying to um, keep the ball rolling. Definitely and, the heart, uh, definitely the heart and soul so far, of it. I don't for think sure. I'm ever going to um, get a, a very famous or large role as Tropical Cocktails. Well, it's definitely iconic. It's definitely going to be the linchpin for sure. I'd say, but yeah, hopefully you do. And yeah, when's Harley Quinn two come out? Do you know? I'm gonna look it's for not that. Harley Quinn two. It's Joker two. Or sorry, Joker two with Harley Quinn. The with the I know it has um, the first. Around, stuff. I would say around uh, the fall of 2024. They're taking huh. their time. Wow. Well, I gotta get. We gotta get going because I have uh, our musical guest coming up. But also, oh, I'm but gonna. But you did say you. You said you had another um, guest. Yeah, from quick Idol guest. Swim. Yeah. Oh, yesterday we had. Um, I hope I don't butcher his name. William Tokarski. He was uh, the killer in Too Many Cooks. He's, he's worked with Eric Andre, too. You might have seen him. He has a really distinctive look. Kind of, he kind of looks like a deranged killer. Wait, he, he's the killer on what show? Too Many Cooks, that adult swim. I heard infomer- of that. Oh, if you look under the Max app in uh, infomercials, there's a segment, and it's Too Many Cooks. You'll you'll get a laugh out of it. And it's on Adult Swim? Yeah, it's, an adult, it's a really an Adult Swim classic. He was telling he, was, he cracked us up in the studio when um, he told the story, because he was in Jumanji Part 2, as a, kind of like a featured extra, but a really great part, juicy little featured extra part. But when some did he shoot that, um, and he filmed it in Georgia where he lives. But Kevin Hart, no, no not Kevin Hart, but he had a scene with Kevin Hart. But this extra, these oh, kids. Oh, I had a scene with Kevin Hart too in a. Um, it was um, something about Black History. Oh yeah. Um, it was on Netflix, um, a show about Black History. Uh-huh. I don't know if it's still on, but a lot of these streaming services, you would think they're going to have these shows on forever. They're not going to delete them because there's no, uh, well, Blockbuster. Yeah. Is well, one thing that sucks, I mean, it moves around, but one thing that sucks is when you're trying to watch something. Yeah. I want to pay us residuals. Yeah, and it says expires in X amount of days or last chance. And you're like, well, where the hell is it going? It says. Yeah. So we got till July. Wait, was it June 16th or mm-hmm. was it July 16th? Hmm. Well, after June six sixteenth, we might not have. Um, that's it for. That's um, another thing to. For Beverly, an evening with Beverly Laughlin. I don't know how people are going to um, be able to watch it. It has to pop up somewhere else because it's so great and with so many people in it, you know. So, you know, but. Oh man! Oh, and but one that's thing else... I have to work with it as a union person. Yeah. Right? I have to worry about. Yeah. Um, the shows getting pulled off. Because they don't want to pay their fair share of the residuals. Uh. Oh yeah, but what William was saying about uh, the two being recognized on Jumanji, he was there, and it's funny because he's you know a little older fella too. He has grandkids even, but uh, he looks almost too young to have great grandkids. But he was there, and like you know, The Rock didn't recognize him, but he worked with them, and he was in the room with them, and everything. But like then these tweens, these teenagers that were like you know they were as extras, what saw him and they went you know because they love Adult Swim, kind of like you were saying your your age, your people that love you the most that recognize you were like six to twenty five. Some teenagers were like too many cooks and pointed at him, and Jack Black jumped up out of his chair and said, "You motherfucker! I knew I recognized you!" And he gave him a hug and selfies and got uh, a bunch of likes for a picture with. Now that since the main leads recognized him, yeah, did they say? Um, 
did they talk to the director about giving him an upgrade? Well, it's funny, yeah, if you listen to the I'm because I'm putting this podcast together, it's probably an episode and air on the one right after this one. Um, but yeah, he, he told a story about how they the director wrote another scene for him where Kevin Hart beats him up because um, his character kills Hart's character, you know, because they're video game kind of, you know, video game characters, avatars in the movie. And then um, they, f- they have a little fight scene with, with the second team and everything. But then that got cut. But he got paid like an extra 7500 for it, But even though it got cut. So, oh, wait. How much did he get paid? I want to say he said 7500 I mean, it's in our yeah, recording. Usually is, um, a day player rate is right now it's $1,070. And it goes up every July. Everything goes up. Unless but right now about... it's $1,070 oh. for um, a day player rate. Now, with the uh, fight uh, scenes and stuff added, would that go up, jump up even more? Oh, yeah, they have to get, um, if they, yeah, stunt pay. They were stunt, yeah, if fighting if they, stuff. Uh, paid him for his stunts. Hmm. Oh, yeah, well. 7000 seems like right for stunt pay. Yeah, like a huge fight scene in a tumble or something. <laughs> yeah, that's stunts. And if he did it, um, I would file a claim. That's what SAG is for. <laughs> Oh, oh, man, right. so, so much going on, sack. right? Isn't that yeah, nuts? Yeah, principal stuff, they have to pay you sack. But the thing is, um, I think it's like something like a ridiculous seven fifty an hour wow. uh, to be an extra in Georgia. Huh. And they can't find, I, I talked to a casting director there. Um, they can't find enough extras. Uh, that's wow. Because the, the wages are too low. Man, I remember when I when I lived in LA, um, when I was living there, one of my day jobs between trying to find acting gigs was being an extra, and that was a little way back, back when Alias and Arrested Development, that, Pittsburgh, uh, Burbank, California. Oh, but Burbank. like, uh, but like, would, oh, we might have worked on the same shoots because sometimes maybe. I, you know, oh, I used maybe. To do background work. Yeah, like, did Name you? Name a shoot you worked on. I mean, I might have Alias, uh, Las Vegas, Vegas. That show Vegas. It was filmed in L.A. Though. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I worked on it um, uh, two times. Yeah. Um, but so you had the same experience where you people would in the extras holding would pass the phone around like I booked I booked it and then hey I got someone else here and they pass the phone around saying you know oh, you'd say you're, they don't do that anymore. yeah no uh, this this tech age now I haven't done extra work since a, a long time now but it's no, just kind of funny uh, they, they, you know, cause you, especially with central casting in fact central uh, casting yeah I've been there uh, <laughs> very rarely is there any conversation. Between, a physical conversation with the casting directors um, and uh, and the talent. Wow. Um, it's done. Uh, it's, it's done by text messages, hmm. and you, it's hard to get a hold of them. It's hard to like call uh. them back and say I can't make it. <laughs> and then uh. they, um, they, they say they they think you're a no show. Hmm. Um, That's wild. But the thing is this. People got to stop working from home and get back to normal. Yeah, right now. it's wild. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, there, there's a lot of mistakes, you know, mm-hmm. going on. And oh, I, I want to mention this before I have to go. Mm-hmm. This casting director from Florida um, hacked into my account, and it took me um, a week to get everything normalized. Oh with, my gosh! Uh, Facebook with the Meadow Universe of yeah. Facebook, Instagram, and yeah. uh, Messenger. Uh, I still have a little quirks, but uh, it was great because who else can you uh, trust? Your um, your friendly casting director. Yeah. And I was really upset that um, he did this to me, and I think he did this because um, he, he was one of those. He was he he, he uh, could not get enough people to finance his projects. Wow. Uh, so he decided to scam and hack, you know, their Facebook pages. So is he done now or what? Uh, somebody from Facebook helped me out. Jeez. Uh, it was, um, it was, it was a whole process. God. Um, I just hope, um, that I don't hear from him again. Oh well, yeah, we, yeah. Jeez. But, um, yeah, I hate, I mean, it's like losing your address. Books. Yeah. That's but, um, crazy. Yeah, I got um, everything back. I have like two Facebook accounts now uh, hmm. because I don't know how to get it. Because I, I, but I had to use the old one. That uh, that's the one that's more important. Hmm. The more personal one, maybe kind of, I guess, or something like that. You'd, yeah. Every, oh yeah, gotcha. Oh wow. Hey, it's too bad. Um, I wonder if Todd Phillips, the director mm-hmm. of Joker, actually 
rec- you know, recognized me from Tropical Cocktails. Oh, it that makes had sense. Me put like almost, well, almost right next to in the same row as Lady Gaga oh. and Joaquin Phoenix. So when I go to the premiere tonight for um, the Flash, I'm guessing they'll probably have a Harley Quinn or sorry, Joker teaser. Joker 2 teaser. I wonder if you might be in the trailer. I'll look for you for sure. Uh, I don't even think it's out. Mm. Uh, yeah, just go to uh, YouTube Joker 2 trailer. Yeah, I will. But um, because um, I've seen um in magazines or somewhere or pages like oh first look. But yeah, I don't know if I've seen a trailer yet. But I've seen like, little well, images. I saw myself in Vanity Fair. Maybe it's Vanity Fair. Edition. It might have been something like that. I saw. I had yeah. Close up with another uh, big budgeted uh, film. Yeah. Babylon. You heard about Babylon? I I was just thinking about Babylon today. I was wondering if it's going to come out because I know it didn't it didn't do super well. But I wanted to see it. Brad Pitt, Harley Quinn. Okay. Yeah, it's so got to be any time. Prime or, um, Apple, it would be on one of these streaming services. I will. I'm try these first. Amazon, um, Amazon, uh, yeah, Amazon Prime mm-hmm. or Prime Video, um, Apple Plus or Netflix. Okay. One of those three. I still got to get Apple Plus. That's the only one I don't have. Well, but yeah. <laughs> All right, I but. Know, it's re- really, um. Oh, um, okay. It, it, it's great talking with yeah, you. Yeah, it's been such a pleasure. Uh, I'll definitely. And, um, yeah, get the um, after you friend of the show. The other guy, just try to get. Um, yeah, try to guy get the, um, the Adult Swim app. And um, who's your provider? Do you, is it AT and T? Uh, I have. What do I have? Um, Direct TV. I think I have. I've had so we've had oh, so okay. many. We've been through all of them. We've been through Comcast. Direct TV by AT and T. Yeah, I think well, so. Call up Direct TV mm-hmm. if the Apple Apple T if the um, Adult Swim app is not working. Okay. Because it'll say you have to get permission from your provider. They're I got really a Roku. I wonder if a Roku they have gets no right. Yeah, no, no way. So before we go, what's the what's you probably covered it, but what's the most excited thing you're about? What's the most <laughs> the project you're most excited about that you want our viewers to? Uh, check out the most well besides mm-hmm. tropical cocktails mm-hmm. um it's that's definitely your came stage, out, right? uh, yeah. the most the newest thing uh the, all right the two newest things here's what i wanted to check out the most mm-hmm. um the desert fiends that's right with Eric trailer Roberts. on youtube where you see me have dialogue with the one and only eric roberts i'll check that out tonight and uh if there's any kind of line for, at the movie theater before the premiere i'm definitely checking that out and the second thing is um the adult swim app all right well, it's been an awesome pleasure carl legendary carl solomon here oh and we'll definitely ask yes, you back yes, again it's great real soon. With you, and um, I hope we work together. For and I sure. Hope, uh, you're, you know, if if you um, are in, the, if you're uh, wear the producer hat, um, you cast me in one of your projects. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I might even write something for you. Really? Yes. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, so thank God for my fans. And, oh, I have another film that I'm working on called. Uh, and I play an older guy with a beard with antlers called Bond, where um, my um, my daughter has superpowers, Ooh. but she wants to mingle. And what's with, that called? Uh, with the uh, um, with the mortals on Earth. Oh wow! What's that called? Fawn. F A U N. Okay, I like shooting a that um, in the, in uh, three uh, three places. Omaha, Nebraska, Minnesota, and Des Moines. Wow. Um, yeah, another director. I'm so glad a lot of the directors are fans of mine. Yeah. That's what counts. How can they not be? But yes. You have an awesome night, Carl. We're going to check out all your stuff. Okay. All right. Nice talking with you, Kevin. Oh, an awesome pleasure. And Take, take care. You too. Thanks again, Carl. All right. Goodbye. Bye. All right, everybody. That was Carl Solomon, the legend. And uh, we'll be back for the closing message of this episode. It's with a heavy heart that we report tonight that Lance Reddick has died. Lance Reddick, of course, was famously the star of John Wick, The Wire, 
the Netflix Resident Evil series, where he played multiple roles, Comedy Central's corporate, and much more. His trademark, I would say, was, uh, never anyone would agree, so I'm unmatched, stern, very unique gravitas. You always knew he was a very intense character in all his roles. If it was over-the-top comedy or very, very hardcore drama, you were just dialed in wherever you saw him. Lance Reddick, you may famously wish to be LeVar Burton, but we wish you were still here with us. Special thanks to tonight's guest, the magnetic Carl Solomon. Our next episode is in one week. And if you can't wait, Go to the show's Patreon page to order it now. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.